Today we're doing an impossible challenge. Try not to find a piebald moose on Riven to the Coast. That's not actually what we're doing, but if we can get away with not finding one, I'd actually be kind of pleased because it feels like it's a inevitability at this stage. But Hannibal Moose there might as well go ahead and take him out. But we actually have a dual map hunt in the works today. We're starting out here on Revan Tuli Coast, continuing to look for the three diamonds that we have yet to find, Tundra Bean Geese, Grey Light Geese, and Raccoon Dog. Then I want to go over to Verhunka Savannah and keep looking for a Diamond Eurasian Widgeon, on top of all the other cool stuff that Verhunka has to offer. So, first, we have to find the blood from this moose hunting pressure indicates that he did go down. And, I mean, one day probably respawn for a pieball the way things go, but good to get something to start with. And I mean, while we're here, I think that's a Blonfer type brown bear. He is alarmed. Weird angle shot, but should be good for the 7 mil to take that out as well. And if you're wondering why we'd be using a 7 mil on class 7 and 8 animals, the reason is I wanted to use the universal loadout that we made a video on a couple of weeks back, especially switching between maps. The, that's the entire point of a universal loadout, so I thought it'd be fitting to use that again here. But with those two out of the way, now we'll go and start to look for raccoon dogs. And by the way, I've been trying to hunt Reventuli in single player when I can. And with it being turkey season and the fact that it's apparently required by law that I hunt all season and don't just fill my tag at the very beginning, it's been tough to actually get time in. But I did try raccoon dog drink time, and I was finding less than we do just run around here in the daylight. So I guess we'll stick to this for now, and hopefully it won't be much longer. We've shot a bunch of them. I really feel like we're due for a diamond. Ooh. Alright, I just expected that to be a female running past us like that, but that's a pretty good sized raccoon dog to get us started here. If we can get a shot at him semi broadside, would have been nice if he could have stopped for a little bit longer, but I'd say the 243 can do that, even if it ends up being like liver and stomach. And we've got probably the female, in which case we are just going to go 7 mil for that, just because angle's awkward, would have probably helped if we actually hit it, but. That'll help get the response hopefully here. But a guaranteed goal so long as we hit the vials. And actually it was single lung, so not bad. 7.95 for him. And then the female is just going to be a bronze. But at least getting that one down. And from what I've seen as we've continued out here hunting raccoon dogs, it does matter shooting both the males and the females. And that's why I just go 7 mil there. I just want to make sure we get it down and don't want to have to track it 300 meters for what is going to be a silver or bronze anyway. Well, this isn't exactly how we draw it up, but we've got some widgeon out here, and we can see the geese are taken off, so probably we'll go ahead and pop this male real quick, or at least attempt to. There we go. I don't know what happened on the first two, but just to get the extra response here, if we could get a diamond widgeon here, that'd be great, but just because of all the different species of waterfowl on Reventuli, I think going to a map like Verhunga that's only got one, is probably going to be a better option to get a diamond that way. Plus, it limits what we actually have to focus on here on this map. But just have an old setup here. One of our first ones that has gray lag decoys and widgeon decoys. And I mean, I guess passing through here every now and then, maybe this could work. For this guy, though, a nice little gold at 773 just barely makes it. We ended up hit him kind of high and right. The wind was blowing right, but I wouldn't think it would really affect the 22 that much at that range. Might have just been off by a little bit, but good to kind of see some variety. So one thing I've been kind of experimenting with is blind placement for goose hunting because I really want to be able to be more efficient when we're bringing flocks in and we had a comment on I think it was the last Riven Tuli video saying that geese tend to land about 40 meters downwind of the decoys and I've been testing that out and I do feel like that's at least a little more consistent than what we've been seeing. It's not always 40 meters but they do seem to land in that general vicinity. Now there was one male in there and it's gonna be that guy right there. Whether or not we can get him with the shotgun, I don't know. I mean, maybe. And if they weren't in the trees, we could have gotten at least one more easily. I still think we'll get that guy. So that was three. And again, only one male in there. But that's been something that I've been trying to understand, just where to place the blind for the majority of the day. Because for the most part, eight or 9 a.m. till sometime late in the evening, the wind is kind of south or east. It should kind of move towards the south the longer we go here. But we still got three geese. I don't know how we tracked that one 300 meters. I don't think I picked up any goose tracks. Other than a call, but that wouldn't make any sense. Either way, at least we got the three of them. I don't think any of them were unique. The male was a 2.64, so 
Not terrible, but still a silver. Middle neck, by the way, so not a lot of pellets actually got to him. Then the last one was a dark gray. That one we tracked 300 meters. I wonder if the geese tracking is like bugged or something. I've never paid any attention to that. But as the wind kind of shifts towards the south, I think this could work even better because instead of landing here, which obviously is down one of the decoys, they should be landing out in here. Well, unfortunately, the wind has almost shifted like too far to the west now. And we kind of end up with that same situation where we're shooting a little bit far out, but we'll at least take those two. I'd like to get the last one just because it would be the entirety of the flock. And I think that's what triggers response, which obviously in our case is quite important. He's over 150 now, or she is. I really feel like we should be able to get that. There we go. Actually <laughs> hit it with the last two shots. And in the process of trying to figure out where they all ended up, we've got another kind of mini flock coming down here. I want to let that one lay in just because I really think that gives us a way better chance of getting the other two. Just shot, I think, over that guy. Still got the mail at least, but I don't know that we're going to get all three, which was the hope anyway in doing that. We hit that one. Can we do that again and get the final with the 22? It's got to be right in there somewhere. It is always like farther than I think. There we go. That distance gauge in the spawning info has saved me on a lot of geese because I just... I never know how far it is, and if not for that, I usually don't change the zeroing. And I don't even know that we'll actually find all these. Like, ones that we shot farther away with the shotgun may or may not go down in places that we'll actually recover them. But, just the fact that we've shot them, they should all respawn as fresh new geese, which is the entire point. Because even with the help of Sir 12, I couldn't find that last one that we shot, and we knew the rough area that it was in. This was the first one we got with the 22 that we actually hit back-to-back -back shots on. 200 meters away is not a bad deal, but I think it's getting to be about time to head to Verhunga Savannah, but I wanted to revisit the 40 meter downwind thing for waterfowl landing at your decoys, because I decided to test that here on Reventuli Coast. I set up a bunch of decoys, got a tripod, went like 200 meters away, and I just wanted to sit and observe and watch where they landed, and I figured I'd just plink up with the 22 and get some response in the process. And of course, a level 3 golden eye shows up, a species we rarely hunt, Something that we're not after, but a really nice estimate, we've got the 22 in the tripod, and I figured I might as well go ahead and take it out. So, luckily, we're able to get it at that distance, he landed where we could see, and he ends up being our biggest diamond golden eye ever, at a spot that I didn't even know golden eye would be. There were no decoys there for them, he just happened to show up for his own, and I mean, we had another diamond from Reventuli Coast to our lodge, and it is one reason that I think we do have a chance of getting a diamond duration witch in here, We've got everything else with minimal hunting of those species, so maybe it could happen, but we're going to go and check on Verhunga Savannah, and like I said, there's plenty of other cool potential for stuff we could get there as well. And we start out here in Verhunga Multiplayer with a chance to participate in a multiplayer comp, though to be fair, the host left and it's a two-player server, so there's not exactly anyone we're competing against, <laughs> but at least we won that and got it off the screen. We could have just cancelled it, I think, but... Always more fun to do it that way. And that's another thing too. I always think of like male diamond gunsmuck. We don't have one of those on the new system. Things like rare cape buffalo. I just leave out the potential to get more true rack diamond kudu. We have like one really nice one then a level 4 one that's not nearly as big. I'd like to get some more. They do look very good. And the rares look incredible for them as well. And I guess just because we don't see that many. is something I never even consider going after. That's a... Pretty nice Gemsbuck. We might go ahead and try to take that out at range. Because it's going to lay down here shortly. It was starting to turn we took that shot. I don't know that that was the greatest idea, but... Hopefully that was a lung. If it's not... Unless it's, like, spinal cord? It's probably not going to die, so... We can take our time here, I think. Because probably at this stage it doesn't matter. Just check around and see what lines are here. That was the point of coming over here. Not seeing any rares. That maybe looks a little dark, but pretty sure that's just a common. We're going that way, so we will just in case hit that as well. And let's take a look. There is hunting pressure there, so I think we got it. Could have been spine, like I said, but I don't even know that it would be dead yet. The 7 mil is fairly underpowered for something the size of Gemsbuck, and they're tanks. By the way, we are... I guess in some way, shape, or form, widget hunting. Not setting up for them and stuff like that, but just because they're so fast and so small, 
in all likelihood, we're not going to hit them. So we're spotting every single widget that flies over. We just haven't seen any that are even like potential level 2 diamonds, let alone a level 3. We've got our lion there, and it was very much a common fur type. So now the question is, did we hit that chem's buck in the vitals? And is it as big as it looked from whatever that was, 360 meters away or so? But one low bleed rate and actually not too lengthy track later, our Gems buck is laying right there, and even from a distance, it does look pretty good. So, I don't know, I think we've got a shot with that one. It's a 329. Pretty close, but still about 8 shy of being a diamond. 358 meters though with the 7 mil. Not a terrible deal, it only ran 400 yards, but not quite what we were hoping for. So let's praise Sir 12 for help on us out. And we'll be on our way to probably just the next lake up here. What I want to do is like keep on passing through areas where maybe we can find a diamond lion, a rare lion, stuff like that, and also be in those areas to potentially encounter more Eurasian widget. That guy's got really good potential. I can't tell, he must be just like the gray color. He looks kind of funny back in there, but I think that's what it is. 37 to 42, I think the diamond requirement is 37.6 or something, so definitely a legit shot there. Take him with a 7 mil and try to watch what runs out of there, but looks like everything's just gonna go behind the brush, but I don't know, maybe that guy has a chance at it. Definitely smoke with the 7 mil though. I can see him laying just up there, so at whatever it was, 210 meters or so, he ran maybe 40, but it is just the common kind of gray fur type, so must have been just the way he was standing back into the brush. But that is a diamond at 37.76, double him at 217 meters. Not a bad deal. Maybe could have taken that a little more seriously, but level 4 diamond wildebeest and diamond wildebeest in general are fairly common. You can see too, we tracked him at 860 meters. We picked up a max weight wildebeest track, and obviously it was his. I was hoping to see a level 5, not that he would have been as crazy as the nearly max score one that we shot with the shotgun, but fairly close. I should also clarify, it's been, I don't know, 8 hours I think, since the last kill in this video. We ended up running out of time, had the stream, and had to come back to it eventually and jump here into multiplayer once again. So, the most important thing is, we completed the impossible challenge of hunting a moose map without killing a piebald moose. So, at least we accomplished that, and we do have our diamond golden eye. I do want to go and place that, that is our biggest one ever. The Wildebeest I don't think we'll place. We've got some better ones in the second lodge already, but I definitely want to get the Golden Eye in the lodge. So we're placing our old best of 1244 with our new best of 1276. That is a pretty significant improvement. And I want to say like 1300 is max, so definitely a nice duck. And just unfortunately not the level 3 that we're after. I still want to get a Diamond Duration Widgeon, but at least nice to see Revan Tilly still producing. And Varanga Multiplayer always has a tendency to produce something if we put enough time in. And as for the other Golden Eye, I decided to take down just a very much run-of-the-mill 4.6 scoring Diamond Cinnamon Teal and replace him with this guy. Just a much more difficult diamond to get, I think, in a Diamond Golden Eye. And just adding more variety to this Trophy Lodge. And hopefully, that can be improved upon by getting those last couple of species that we don't have in the Lodge. I really want to try to get to that before the middle of June, expecting another map release if EW sticks with their normal map release schedule, and we've been putting in the time on Revan Tuli. eventually it's bound to pay off, but that will hopefully be for a future video because that's going to do it for this one. So as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.